Yes, you know, Shelby. I'm glad. Good. Got it. Wonderful. Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm just um, getting my altar ready. Here it is. Oh, thank you for doing this. Of I course. Just... Yeah. But I want to go around and light the candles now. So maybe you can do welcoming for us. <sighs> and a little blessing. Would you mind doing that while I'm lighting all the candles? I'd love to hear your beautiful what voice. What are you going to do? You know, I have the one that I just wrote for the two kings. Let me yep. cut that I guess. We can talk about that. I think I just want you to welcome everyone in and, and just say what we're going to do a little bit tonight and while I'm lighting the candles. You go ahead. I wish my brain was fully, more fully functional. It's been a rough few days. The, uh, so let's see. So today is the shortest day of the year, and now we enter the three longest nights. The sun will not start to grow until we wake up on Sunday morning, the 25th. Um, in the northern hemisphere i'm not really sure what we were we didn't really have a plan here on what we're doing we're just talking truth how uh, we can get to know each other more better i hope we can get to know each other. yes we are looking forward to knowing you better blessings the spirit of your thank you so much <laughs> yeah i don't know my other one is here with me and we just moved so to say that life hasn't that that uh so often i was taught that this would be the darkest time of the year and the time that our shadow work some call it would be most effective go through the things you might call the darkest look at your list of the things you have the darkest and you have the next three days to write those down and really really love those things about yourself before you release them they're always welcome beautiful where are you from the mayor is in Canada, and I am in New Hampshire in the United States, right on the Canadian border, not far. And I'm right on the United States border, literally. On the other side. Yes, she's on the <laughs> other side of Canada. Yes, exactly. That's the western side, yeah. So we have the east and west here. <laughs> and would we be called the east and west witches? I mean, that's kind of <laughs> I think that's funny. We release the darkness to the West tonight. Mm -hmm. Create a portal of the Triskel, which is three forward moving spirals. Oh, actually, I'm wearing one. I forgot about that. It's been on my mind all day today. Hello from Nova Scotia. Hello from Africa. Oh, that's wonderful. It is wonderful. Boston natives here. I'm about an hour, an hour and little over an hour north of Boston, where I am. Yep. Don, I'm from Ontario, but I now live in British Columbia on Vancouver Island. And my friend Shelby here is from New Hampshire, United States. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we thought we'd come together today and share a little bit about what we know about Yule. And as Shelby already pointed out, the next three days will be the darkest days. And although we often think that Yule is um, is the um, last waning of the of the night, it, it's not. It's actually a couple of more days, and then we will finally the um, the sun waxing back towards us, which will be a blessing as far as I'm concerned, because I'm a sun sign. I'm a Leo. I'm like I'm all into the sun. <laughs> I'm the sun too. I am. It's yeah. dark here. I just you know. But the last few years, I lived a thousand miles south of here. It's dark up here. It's dark up here all the time. You well, it's five o'clock right now, and it's pitch black. Pitch black. And at 410, the sun went down here. Unbelievable. And that, I guess, um, tomorrow, it'll even be earlier, probably four o'clock. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the sun's not awakening in the morning till 7.45 to 7.50. So we're really in the darkest time. And as Shelby pointed out again uh, about this is a good time to do shadow work. And can we maybe elaborate? What would, you, what, would you, what would you say the shadow work really is, Shelby? Maybe some people here don't know what that is. I really can uh, like speak from experience. The, um, it, it is our darker nature or... It may be what a lot of people are bringing up what they call trauma, but 
there's a, any trauma, there's a reason why we have the response. And that would be our, I guess you would call it dark nature. I use that word very gently because it, darkness doesn't mean bad by any means. Everything in order to exist in this dimension has to have both light and dark. It's just it, the law of opposites has to apply for there to be truth here. So let's see. I moved, for instance, and it was bittersweet to come home and be with my family, but the darkness is a great grief of the life that I left behind, for instance. That could be uh, an example of what I'm going through at this time, you know, or a transition of you also lost the you things lost. that don't stay the same. Yeah, the, you know, nothing stays the same. And sometimes I, my, I think I don't, I don't have a lot of regret, but I do wish that I found more joy in those moments because life goes very quickly. We try to achieve a certain level of perfection or striving and things like that. And the truth of the matter is that if I can give anybody advice right now, it'd be to enjoy the moment of now, in every moment. In every you know, moment, live every like dying. Live like you were dying, like it was your last day. And yesterday I felt like I was dying and I couldn't find the joy in it. So sometimes the joy, you can't see that until the lesson, I should say. Maybe joy isn't the right word, but you can't see the opposite of that experience for a while. So mm -hmm. we want to fall into our feelings, even the dark feelings, and accept them and validate them. Don't stuff them down because that's where disease comes from. And allow yourself to go through a process of... yeah. As we were, purification. Time, we were talking about this time being um, um, a time where many, many people find themselves in depression. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And much of it has to do with uh, regret, resentment, um, feeling as if you didn't belong or you didn't have the love that you needed. And, you know, that's a really big thing. And a lot of people just try to go on every day, day to day without acknowledging and abandon abandonment rejection and this is what you're talking about. face it look at they it come right to you at this time of year you know because our biology says that we're supposed to be hibernating on these three days and that's also shadow work to go into the dark places well actually some of my teachings it is the entire winter that we do this and i'm part native so in our teachings as this as the darkness is here there's a each month has its own uh, life force. Like for instance, uh, this is called a little spirit moon. Little spirit moon, taking a look at yourself and just what we're doing, what we're talking about now. The next moon in January is more of a, a great spirit that is uh, adjusting yourself according to what your god or goddesses um, have uh, declared to you or, sh or shared to you. So that is you acknowledging, okay, this is my faith. This is what I think my God is thinking of me. And I'm going to adjust myself according. And then in the final month of the winter months in March, it's a time to respect all the sweetness in yourself and the little tiny bits of it even. So we have a question here about shadow work is basically a form of journaling, correct? So how... I think it's unique to all of us and we develop tools for ourselves. I went through a very upsetting thing the past few days. So I had to reset my nervous system before I could even deal with the emotion. You know, that kind of upset where the body was, you know, and you can call that shadow work too. So for me, I might need to, before I can get to the root of the darkness through this long period or short period or the whole winter. But what they're asking here is, is it just journaling? No. So you, it is not. It is not. Yesterday, I, I in my toolbox, I have to first listen to a certain music that gets my physical body out of a state of being. And then I go to the next sense of my five senses that I can bring back to myself before I can get to the root of what this trigger is. Uh, some are more apparent than others, right? It's At this a, lot of of year. a lot of reflection. And yes, journaling is absolutely part of it. Um, especially if you're working on your own shadows and you don't have a helper you definitely want to journal so you can go back and read it um, but it's also about counseling it's also about getting counsel it's about going to you know those wise people that you know and taking time in fact last night it was the uh, uh, yule eve or like christmas eve yule eve and many of us um, are aware of that night being really pertinent to the feminine the feminine goddesses yeah, it's one of, and, one of the celebrations, I can't recall the name, it's all about celebrating the mothers and the women. And, the, and it's called the Mother Night. Mother. And 
and one of the things that's important there is is to when speaking in terms of shadow is you know often our shadows come from our experiences with our parents unfortunately and our yeah. you know our moms aren't perfect they did the best they could or so we hoped um but seriously it would be about looking at you know those experiences uh with your mother that were less than tasteful or you know less than helpful um and acknowledging them and and maybe a whole lineage of trouble that our mothers uh provided us but also in recognizing the goodness that is there i don't have to write them out so much anymore because you become more skilled in your own i keep using a toolbox because i think it's unique to all of us yeah uh, sounds sense that bring me something triggers you okay yesterday i had a very upsetting day something triggers you and then you get a whole flood of other things that identify with that trigger and that might be where journaling would come in because you just kind of got to brain dump that yeah. out somewhere. And your subconscious, you can't, you might not make sense of what the trigger is. And the tr every trigger is an opportunity to repeat ourselves, which is fine, or to bring something up and really reflect on what's going on here. And then I, we apply the tools. We apply the tools to the five senses, whether it's physical body, eat something, sleep, talk to someone, what yeah. is necessary for you. To yeah. bring that to put shine light on it so it's not such a shadow and really love that thing about yourself yeah the the thing that i think for me in in my traditions we use um we use a lot of uh journal journal not journaling excuse me journey work yeah you journey work journey. yeah doing journey work and meditation and stuff like that that you would you would need another practitioner to help you with and uh, you may use drum, you may use rattle to pull that energy out from the depth of your soul, of your heart. Because sometimes we can't just bring it out in journaling. You know, we're really uh, mindful of what we're saying. And what if somebody finds our book and that kind of stuff? So we're not always completely honest with ourselves in journaling. You know, the EFT tapping, there's a lot of ways to get this. You're, 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 what you're doing is you're adjusting your flesh body to your subconscious body with your etheric body. And you want to bring this thing out. That's called that NFT cat yeah. tapping. Mm -hmm. yeah. EFT. 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 That's right. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I'm not fond of tapping. See, that's, uh, I know a lot of people who like it. For me, it's an irritation. Huh? That's it's why I talk about everyone's toolbox is unique to them because of their, your, your nervous system is not wired like mine. Yeah. I have, I can't sit down and meditate, for instance, very well. I'd, I could paint a whole room, though, and my mind is meditating. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, just, Meditate. it's in the zone. It's in the zone where time and space yeah. don't matter. And I'm with you. I'm not a lay down and meditate person. I'm a do something and meditate person. Very rarely am I like, oh. <laughs> same, same. So this is a good time for us to look at our shadows or look at our dark sides. But that is also um, what what uh, Sawain does. This this particular time differs slightly, and in my opinion, anyways. And I think this time is also for us to. We always we've acknowledged it. We we see these things in ourselves, and now it's time to adjust them. It's actually time to adjust them. And you want to use the skills and the strengths that you already carry to help with that. So, you know, this is a good time to look at those things, the good things that you're carrying and, and infuse yourself with more of that. So if you're a writer, write more. If you're an artist, art more. If you're, uh, if you're a body health person, do more of that. If you're whatever, do more of it. But I like to read the comments and see what's there. Yeah. Where we're all at. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, um, in, in setting up your ritual space at this time, one of the things you want to do is have a lot of light, a lot of candles. Again, just like Saw Wayne, lots of candles. Uh, the, the thing that we're doing a little bit differently now, though, instead of actually inviting all the ancestors in, they're already here because this is the absolute darkest time of the year. And anything dark, even, you know, the, the harsher uh, ancestors will be present. So what we're trying to do is light, light, it lighten up, lighten everything up and intrigue the sun to, you know, come on back and, and warmth our, warm up our space and warm up our hearth and, you know, provide us more um, lightheartedness, more like you called, remember you were saying um, you saw the word Yule written as jewel? 
Yeah, it was Jewel in one of the, there were so many. This is the oldest recorded holiday in history. And there are so many, so many versions. Yeah, that was Jewel. Yeah. The other day. And mm -hmm. one of the things that um, I noticed about and why I thought Jewel was a very uh, good one to, to speak on is because this is also a time to honor in gold, yeah. literally gold. Little and if gold. You have gold, which I have very little, <laughs> um, but um, gold is um, something that we used to put on our old Christmas trees, any kind of gold coins. Um, and I did put some coins. I'm going to show you the altar so you can I see. Think we all used to get those chocolate coin, gold wrapped coins. Exactly. <laughs> in our yeah. And that's yeah. why we see them even at the dollar store. You'll see them in a, little, in a little, in a little bag. That activity? That looks be What do you got there? Let's see. Right. Is that a nativity? Oh no, this is. I, this I is could just see her. Okay, virgin, a virgin goddess. Um, this is the time that we also acknowledge the virgin goddess, mm -hmm. and we'll talk a little bit more about. And we're not talking about uh, a woman who has her hymen. No, in the old days, the Italian people okay. were the ones who acknowledged the virgin goddess, and that was literally a woman who was intact without a man. Bottom line, <laughs> and she was powerful, and she was. Um, fertile and uh, so this to me um, it represents the virgin goddess and her her child born without wedding you don't see a man here right now do you <laughs> however I am acknowledging the men here up here with the pine cones that's okay. so pretty right and then there's the money down here and then there's chestnuts there's yeah, eight, eight yeah, chestnuts and the, the chestnuts yeah, they, they represent fertility, um, and uh, the wheat, the winter wheat, and that is uh, one of the the medicines of the mother, which is why I I put it on there, and of course this is also in acknowledging the food and abundance that we have for the winter long, and hoping that we have enough to get us through the winter. <clears throat> it does smell red amazing. And red and green, the red and the green candle. Red and green candles, and. Um, and do you want to talk about the colors and why they're there, Shelby? Well, in my mother's tradition, the red, we always used the red and the green. And the red was to symbolize birth, the birth of the new sun. The they blood. Yeah. They, the blood of birth. Yeah. And the green is the newness and the fertility of well, pregnancy for the birth of spring coming. Nourishment, abundance to be born. That's why we, a lot of people don't really understand what the symbolism between the red and the green. They just they realize that they're holiday, but that's the traditional meaning of them. Mm -hmm. It's the bloodshed at birth. And, and the green, green representing, and the reason why we pick the evergreens is because they're the only tree that lives always. That's green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's part of the reason why. <clears throat> so on this altar, we've honored, there's the bells that also represent the bringing in of the energy there's eight bells eight um chestnuts and they represent the eight sabbaths the wheel of the year oh i can't wait to unpack my stuff oh my gosh that's beautiful i'm so i so appreciate you doing this oh sweetheart i am more than happy to do this for everyone and for myself you know it really it's helpful to have you all to work with because it really puts me in you know the state of doing it yeah you know and even if it was a rough day today, for instance, I said to my son is, I'll feel better for doing it. That's my he point. We do. Early. I said, the giving, uh, when I to give of myself and share this time and experience in this last year, and share, even if it touches one person's path, you know, or thank you all of us for sharing a tiny piece of your path, you know, yeah. it. I will leave feeling better. That's how I feel about it. a really hard time, yeah. Really and and you know we've had like both Shelby is Shelby has had an emotional time losing her puppy yesterday, and myself and my mother are overcoming um, COVID. And to be honest, neither one of us were really in the mood, let's say, to do such a thing. But we put ourselves there, didn't we? Yeah, that's no. Oh, hang on, my dog is going to take us right out. Come on. My other one, she's had a hard time. I didn't even know if we'd be able to get through this. She's there. We go. Lay down. That's true, right? Thank yes, you for understanding. We picked her up and we moved and then the other dogs, you know, anyways, let's not talk. Everybody, no, I know. Everyone's but, going through a big time here. Yeah. And she was really having a hard day, but she's settling down finally now. 
Well, that was my point. Look, really, us three just... old girls, we've been together for over a decade. The three of us have never been apart. So this is a big change. Yeah, it sure is. Traveled all over the place. Big change. Uh, hang on Good. a second. I, I have to put the phone down for a second here. Just I'm just... sorry. I'm going to tell a little story while we're here. And I don't know what it has to do with you, but it definitely has something to do with this dark, dark time. So I posted a video a few months back and I asked people about what they thought of this wild dream. And in the dream, it's still with me. I was standing like at an old property and both of my kids were there. I'm not sure if you remember seeing this one when you hear me say it, but both of my kids were in this dream. And we were like at the neighbor's house at a previous location I lived at. And you know how in the dream state things are that you know the place, but it's still a little different. Anyways, I looked up and before I could say anything, there was a giant sun above me and it split into two and like an earth came out of the middle and it hit me. It like, boom, and hit me. And everybody ducked. I was like, what? And I sat up and I was like, what, what, what was that? Two suns, the sun split into two and out from between them shot a big earth. And yesterday I said, it was me. Mm -hmm. I've had a foot in two different worlds. That was me. And I came barreling in and I'm telling you yesterday I hit earth like a part of my language, like a fucking meteor. Bam, boom, I hit. And now we rebuild from here. But it had, it, it, and that started around stone. So it's just been a unique year, even for experienced practitioners, as far as unusual events and interpreting those events and, you know, nine months in a camper. I was like between two worlds, a foot in two different places. This dream, I almost felt dreamy and unsettled. Like I couldn't rebuild from where I was. Well, until, until today, I'm like, all right, we start here. It's so perfect. Yeah. It's the first time I've felt that way since, since I threw my stuff in a truck and sold the North Carolina house. It's been quite a ride. I tell you. Welcome back, sister. Thanks. I did. I hit the planet yesterday like a big rock. Like a big rock. Boom. Anybody else that way? Anybody else feel that yesterday was uh, like the end of thing and today the beginning of something else? I feel that way too. I always do at Yule. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Freeze. Uh... Oh, that's my dog. <laughs> right? Oh. Can you hear her? She's whining. Oh, oh, yes, I know. So we're all old. <laughs> uh. So I have um, I have a number of candles here representing different things. One of the, and I want to tell you about the herbs I'm using um, so that people know the types of things that they can use at this time. I'm using calendula, for starters, to bring back the sun. This is a very um, sun-infused kind of uh flower i'm using that's actually what i'm drinking oh really calendula mm -hmm. perfect lavender is another one that i'm putting here now uh, that's mixed in there too <laughs> what else are you cooking up over there so i I'm just burning... put some we got it in a cup <laughs> you're drinking it and i'm burning it yeah <laughs> we are so awesome. actually you guys you should hear our um private conversations this is really what's <laughs> happening here what was it I said the other day? What's the orange stuff with wassailing? Wassailing, right? That is what that is. Okay, keep going. What else are you cooking up? <laughs> Eucalyptus. Eucalyptus. That's not in my cup. <laughs> I would not make it taste very nice. No. <laughs> um, but, and also some Yule oils, which the are. I heard a candela. She's not spelling it right. C A L E N D U L A. Calendula, yeah, calendula. Um, but I'm also using bergamot. It's marigolds. Yes, it is. It's I'm marigolds. Bergamot to manage um, the uh, the depression energy. Yeah, bright oh, yellow marigolds, the the flavoring kind, is often used in gourmet cooking as well. Yes. Yeah. And I'm also using dragon's blood because I always found that dragon's blood was really helpful to send the message home. And I have a hard time finding that where I am. I wanted to make some of the ink and things. So are you how are you burning it on a resin or uh, are you burning it on a 
Well, right now, I, I, I chose a candle this time, although I do have the hard chunks and resins. I sell it in my store, sweetie, just so you know. Um, and Palo Santo. That was the last thing that I just wanted to remind you. And the reason I use Palo Santo is because it's considered the holy wood. Mm -hmm. And um, some people have stories about Jesus Christ um, dragging Palo Santo, the holy wood tree, to his death. Oh, really? Yeah. So there's, you know, and this is, you know, we don't, we, we as witches don't really consider Jesus Christ uh, something that is important in our practice. But I'd like to challenge that by saying this. My belief is that since Jesus was a Hebrew, what's he doing in a Christian book? Number one. I think that's the he, first. He, he was like a very, he was like the, yeah. He was, a, he was the, you know, and, and if you were on TikTok today, they'd say he misappropriated everything because he went <laughs> and studied in all of Asia. He went to Europe. They love the fact that he spread, that he was so, you know. <laughs> Again, you sit I down. You shouldn't be using that food, you know. <laughs> but yeah. I think he was a pagan, and that's what got him into trouble. I think you know he was he was trained as a rabbi. His lover, who was Mary Magdalene, she was a agnostic Christian, and the two of them got together and they philosophically discussed their lives into some beautiful place where they realized maybe they were a little more open than who their parents were and who their culture was. So I believe that they were pagans. I even say I see. I believe Jesus was a witch. I do. I believe it firmly. I, I, yeah, I've definitely spoken those words years you, ago. Years ago. Huh. Yeah, so I love Dragon's Blood Sage. Oh, yeah, I made up my mind last night to end all of my struggles, and suddenly today I feel better. Yes, beautiful. That is yeah. wonderful, you are wonderful. They also, uh, you know, as far as those structures go and trying to wipe us go, that, that it goes along with, you know, his birthday. They kind of confusing the two there because the sun is gone for three days, like in the Easter when he's supposed to leave before he resurrects. I mean, they mixed them all up there kind of thing with that. We all know he wasn't born at this time of year. No, in fact, uh, where the star was hanging in the sky when they say he was born, um, there's been some astronomers who have gone, and astrologers as well, who have gone to check in. And it looks like it was August 18th, which would have made him a Leo. The calendar would have been different. They didn't have the Gregorian calendar. So it would have been August or September. And that would have been the time they would have been traveling. That's why they ended up going to that city. They had to pay their tax. Yeah. I want to respond to Ashley. Your husband thinks you have the spirit of Lilith. And is he going to trade you in for Eve? <laughs> I just want to ask. Because if he does, he's not going to have nearly as much fun as he would with Lilith. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, right? <laughs> There's lots of really interesting stories out there about Lilith. Um, lots of books out there. Uh, I've read a few um, bits and pieces of it. I think it's very interesting stuff. You're going to trade him in for Adam. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, wonderful. So I want you guys to be thinking about something, um, and we're going to share a little bit more of our stories, but I want you to be thinking about a wish, something you really, 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 really want in this coming year. And just one thing, just one thing, one important thing that has been maybe lacking in your life the last year. And we're going to wish on it. We're going to wish on it. We're going to say a prayer a little later, and we're going to wish on it all. So just think about it right now and don't say nothing yet. When we do, we'll ask you and you can say it in the comments what it is you're going to wish. And I will breathe it into the incense and the burning of the herbs here. Now for allow yourself to dream big here. Yes, all the way. Okay. Oh, thank you for adding that. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll talk a little bit about maybe um, the, the whole um, beginning of the tree, the Christmas tree. Um, there's lots of stories about it. And one of the most interesting stories for me, I think, is that it looks like if I was to do, like I unravel everything that I have, it looks like it came from Germany. What Germany. do you think? Yeah. yeah. I think so. And they've yeah. got to decorate him. This, it, 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 it's the, like I said, it's the oldest holiday, but that's when they started to decorate them. They, I believe that then, it, oh, I have 
them all so mixed up. They might even have tried to stay up for the full three days because they were worried about evil at night and lit up the trees. <laughs> no, that's for that, if I've got it right, but that's the group. There's so many different traditions and stories with this particular holiday that I would have to have it written. I had to have to have it in front of me, and I don't. Callie, the Callie. truth, you're right. People are so afraid. Come, come here. Uh, in their bodies while they were sleeping, basically possessing them, that they would stay awake for those three days. Yeah. Yeah. And they would take they would take a lot of different herbs to help them stay awake. Yeah. And those those amanata uh, mushrooms that would um, bring them on trips. And that's where, you know, we get the flying reindeer. That came from them eating those red and white mushrooms. And then what would happen in the shamans or the 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 the, sh the sh Santa shamans, <clears throat> they would actually drink the urine. Of yes. The yeah, I recently read all of those. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Wild, it, huh? So we have a question here. Is that why we light the Yule log? And that's actually a different one. What do you mean? From the Christmas tree. That came more from um, the British Isles and uh, Scotland, Ireland, Druidry. And that was still after the tree because... Um, it's more modern than the tree, yeah, yeah. Yeah, way more modern than the tree. What was the, the Yule log? log? Yes, yes. Well, I know it doesn't go back that far, but it definitely comes into what we, we, we would call Wicca, modern witchcraft, you know, so those 1920s and 30s writings of all the gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, that... Um, I always use use that loosely too because we know this history is also a lot of it had a lot of fiction and a lot of it was made up and no one can really prove some of these stories but the Yule log came into really what we call modern witchcraft because in ancient times they didn't really call us that except to kill us you know oh. Callie please please be done be done I love this I Born. I realized that uh, some of the young witches are calling yourself baby witches, and I thought it was a little patronizing when I first heard it, and then I realized you like to call yourself a baby witch, and I thought that was, it was cute, but I was, I would never have thought to do that and get away with it. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't. I know, right? No. I call a seasoned witch. Initiate. <laughs> season witch because I've been doing this a long time and um, uh, there was some conversation today where some women were calling themselves seasoned witches who were like 35 I wouldn't call them seasoned I know I try not to make those I try not to sometimes we hear some pretty powerful superior statements coming out of people that are younger than my kids I, I know and I think she's only experienced really it's funny eh being on the other side of it hmm yeah. In my and, and you know, I can just tell how much older I am because I don't have to say anything. We all have to walk down. I was an arrogant little quit too. <laughs> my twenties, I, mean. I you know yeah. thought I knew everything and was, you know, oh, so and then as we change we realized that there's we old... have a lot we have a lot of power in being able to be quiet. Well I think the other thing is um we don't even know what my silence spreads everywhere. Yeah. We really don't <laughs> know until we know it. Yeah. The thing about being a young witch, you think you know a lot because you studied a lot, but then as you get going and, you know, 10 years pass and you go back and you look at maybe something that you wrote in a journal and you go, oh my God, I'm oh, yeah. so brave. Thank God we didn't have, thank God we didn't have this social media when I was partying in the 80s. <laughs> as a kid in the 70s and the 80s, we had a permit to drink and drive and all that kind of was crazy. We would have been roasted. <laughs> Then my high school boyfriend went on to be a, a very famous rock and roll singer and he was so straight and I just wanted to party. I kind of took a wrong road there for him. <laughs> I let him go and he passed, he passed, he actually passed away. He couldn't play in 2020. I'm pretty sure that broke his heart. Still traveling around. Right. The, um, this is a very interesting conversation. Yeah, it always is. Mm. It always easy now, my dog. Easy. Let me do she wants to talk to I don't know how to say it Interesting. I look at so back to the Yule log it was part of it when when they did the I just want to give your so there's the Sabbat for 
in a Wiccan tradition, which I guess I don't really do labels. I always find myself solitary, but I, my foundation is and always will be a traditional Wiccan coven that my mother was in. And that was my example. And then there wasn't any information for like three decades. So it came out in the nineties. That's how, that's how old I am. So, you know, I really uh, developed my own thing. Yeah. And then I remember, yeah. So it would go the, the wheel of the year and the Yule log, it was part of the Yule celebration and it is lit from a piece of last year. Everyone in the group got a ashes from the one that you would burn and a piece was kept to light the following year's Yule log. But you also kept some of the evergreens. Uh, no, no. Callie, come on now. You let me be live. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. That's it. Good girl. My my kids have guinea pigs. Can I tell you that? Anyway, that's what this is about. She's like, what is that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> the same with my kids and they have guinea pigs so um and she's never met a guinea pig she just doesn't want to harm it but she's like what is that i must why so anyways the back to the yule log we would keep evergreens from the yule so if you do light something or do something over the next few days and you keep a pine cone or a piece of a uh, spruce tree that you might use pine needles we will use that in the imbolc a fire festival which is which is coming up february first groundhog day mm -hmm. groundhog day yeah yeah absolutely well, each piece is was intended to be used in the next ritual they all they all uh are yeah. interrelational and that's so, why it's all of the, the it's every six weeks for the court for the um experiences basically you have your four Sabbat, major Sabbat, and actually, I'm not saying that right. This is actually what, the way I learned it was a minor Sabbat, and the cross quarters of the major. So, in bulk is a major Sabbat, is it, how I learned it. Yeah, so, and and in bulk is the halfway point between winter and spring. So there's Salwain, in bulk, Beltane, and uh, no Ostara and Belt. Oh, uh, so, yeah. No, 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 no. I said that wrong. Hold on, I'm getting not. Nasa, Nasa, sorry, I got Lunasa, forgot Lunasa. So it's Sawain, Imbolc, Beltane, Lunasa. And those are the four major or the main, the grand Sabbaths. Call it Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. four. And the cross quarters, basically. And then there's the. And there's the, the uh, two equinoxes, the fall equinox and the. Um, spring equinox, and then there's the summer solstice and the winter solstice, which is where we are today. Um, yeah, they all have different names. Yeah, they do so, have different Yeah, actually, Teardrop, there's a, a number of ways to pronounce it, depending on who you are. I have some Druid friends who say it even more uh, eloquently, and some uh, Gaelic friends that say it even a little bit more different. So it's Sawain, or some people, uh, it's spelled Sam Hain. But it's Sawain. And we said Sawain. Sawain. Yeah. Sawain. That's, that's another very common way of saying it. <clears throat> but um, so here we are at um, midwinter. <laughs> and oh, in Irish, in Irish. Oh, you know what else is happening in Irish? Let's talk a little bit about some of the, um, the, the situations that are going on at this time. Like we have the Holly King and the Oak King. We have the Wren. And the robin, which is more Irish, that's what made me remember it. And uh, the wolf and the stag. So, wow. right? So this, uh, we'll start with the uh, holly king. Um, the holly king has reigned from um, from the six months prior, prior, previously to now. <clears throat> so midsummer was the beginning of holly king. And the holly king goes until midwinter, which is now. And this is when the oak king kills him off. And rains for the next six months. And this is why we have holly, usually have holly on our, our altars. And I usually would have, but I got two feet of snow and I did not want to go. Get any. Yeah. In, in Coven, that's what it would look like when the one it was, it, you would say there was an enactment of him being taking the rain in midsummer. So, you know, at each stop, it, there's a skit that went on in full garb of this and what she's talking about here is what I experienced. 
the Holly King has been in charge until now, and then they duel it out. Yeah. To his death, basically. Yeah. <laughs> basically, and then the high priestess would stomp her, stomp her thing, and he would run over, and they would crown him, and then yeah. he'd dance around, and they. I can't remember the song now, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, I I was always confused about that because I always thought the Holly King was the original Santa. So why is he dead? Well, then it occurs to me it's because Christmas is now over. It's over. However, however, the twelve days of Christmas thing that starts today. That starts today. And yeah. every single day from here to the twelfth day, which will bring us to the second day of January. I think it's um, January. Yeah, January second. Yeah, and we're supposed to, each day you may want to pick a tradition that you want to do. So let's say one day it's, um, you know, making cakes. The next day it's making ale or, or opening up your ale. And then the next day it's drinking and eating the cakes and ale, because that's one of the things that we um, like to do at this time. Maybe, uh, maybe it's storytelling. Maybe it's sharing stories or traditions from other cultures with your friends and family. Um, we need to get back to traditions, don't we? What's that? We need to start creating new traditions. Everyone's all split apart. And we go through this pandemic thing and really isolate it even more apart. Yeah. And making, maybe like, like one of our guests here said, uh, maybe making um, a journaling each day, you know, and a, and a realization for each day that, you know, maybe you had or came to or dreaming or writing down your dreams and trying to interpret them and what they mean and how they relate. Um, I think that uh, doing different types of rituals each day, maybe you want to speak to different ancestors at this time too, or, or your deities, definitely your deities would be another, this is a good time to speak to them. So each of the 12 days, you want to honor something. Maybe you want to bring gifts to someone. You, maybe you want to go out and hand out money to the homeless or, you know, I, I do some of the things that I'm sharing with you and I do something each day. On the first day of Christmas, the true love gave to me, but it is about giving. It is about giving. It is about giving. And it's important to, um, you know, not only do you want to give money or things that uh, are expensive, but maybe time, maybe kindness, maybe a time, phone. Time, treasure, or talent. It doesn't have to be money. Yeah. Yeah. Us all. yeah. Another thing you might want to do is create a, a jar, a time jar. And each day you write something in there that you would like to see accomplished by the following year. And then the, just for the 12 days. And then, then the next year you open up your time jar and you read off each one of those days that you had put in there and see how well you did. See how, you know, do you have any work to do? Or did you even do better than you thought? That's a really good way to do it. In a, in a, as, a prof as a teacher teaching, we used to, to have everybody write down their milestones and put them in a jar because you don't think you get anywhere and then read them next year on all the things you actually did accomplish yeah because we don't give ourselves the credit we deserve we, no we, we, we built in forgetter and for all of that we just look no. zero in on the <laughs> try and zoom out this is actually, a really kind of thing this year believe me i haven't felt like i accomplished anything no. <laughs> this year and it's a good thing to do because then you can sort of acknowledge your goodness and, you know, your hard work. Another good thing to do at this time is to make um, wine. To make wine. Even just starting it now or and then mull it. Mull wine. Mulled wine is so yummy. And we were talking about that yesterday, I think, was uh, about putting on the stove different types of herbs and, and fruits and then you boil it all up. But you can actually take, like, Botticelli wine. Get a big bottle of Botticelli wine. I've done this. And you cut up your 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 uh, citrus fruits, all your citrus fruits, and some cloves and cinnamons, cinnamon sticks, and things like that. And you put it in your in your pot and you heat it up and you heat it all together. That's called mulled wine. And is it ever, ever delicious? Ever delicious. Sounds delicious. And cherries. Don't forget cherries. Tinctures, cherries. Those would be considered dark I would consider that on this dark side. That's right. 
that's part of the reason why you're putting it in. You're putting it in for the for the value of the vitamins because this will help you over the winter, and then also honoring the the things that we've been talking about. Different foods will honor that, right? And tinctures, yes, absolutely. Making tinctures is a good time. This is a very good time for that. And don't forget a gratitude jar. That's a great idea. Gratitude. Yes, yes. I want to learn to make praline for gifts. Oh, those are easy oh, to make. You did. Oh, you did? Good for you. Yeah. And they're so yummy. I actually, I had the nicest thing happen to me in the last few days. Um, I had uh, some people, I had two different people come to me, st uh, different people that I met through my store come. They wanted to come out to the store, so they did. And one of them brought me a huge bag of homegrown tobacco and another oh. one, a bag of eagle feathers. What? Yes. I tell you, I was just, I was like, just so grateful and so overwhelmed with that. And those, both feathers, are, those feathers are outlawed here. Go to well, they, federal they oh, I'm in America. They're all over the beach here. Right. They're all yeah, even if you find them on the ground, it's illegal to have them here. Yeah, but oh, both of them represent the eastern direction, by the right. way. So the tobacco and the eagle represent the eastern tobacco. direction. So this told me, and it was like, they don't even know what they're doing. It's just so wonderful that we are, it's a new beginning. And we were talking about this too, Shelby, that this is, uh, in some old traditions, this was considered the new year. We know that because we have the new year coming. And so these people don't even recognize or know these things. And they did this for me without even knowing that they were honoring the thing that I love the most and that it really meant something to me. A big thing. Right. That's beautiful. I love the it. Deer, yes, as the spirit of the winter solstice, yes, the deer is very important. The reindeer um, were sacred animals to the Celts um, and the Scandinavians and the Germans, which is why they are honored. In fact, did you know there are eight reindeer representing the eight days, the Sabbaths of the Wheel of the Year? That's why there are eight. And, and also, um, did you know they're female? Did you know the, the reindeers? I don't know if I knew they were all female. They are. Because only the female have their horns at that time of year. Because the males have shed them. <laughs> the stuff I know, it's just silly stuff. But... That is amazing. You know, I watched the, the, the real old, like, 50s and 60s version of Santa Claus coming to town with the baby yeah. the other night. Winter Warlock had the this little last little bit of magic that made the reindeer fly that bust them out of jail. <laughs> It was, it was just it, Chris Pringle. Ah, oh, we look at these things so differently, don't we? <laughs> it was a really good show from this new perspective. Says, of course, they're female directions, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is funny, but yeah, I, I would say yeah. Lady Jessica, the Burgermeister hated the toys and outlawed all the toys, and then and Winter Warlock made a basically a scrying ball out of a snowball right <laughs> his heart warmed he lost all his magic because it was dark magic oh what a my goodness well if you look at some of the very old um ceramics in that with the with um, santa claus and little girls and little boys with their presents there's always little red and white mushrooms all over the place and you know that's yeah. a that mm -hmm. that mushroom you could not eat that mushroom and get away with it. You have to have it diluted, which is why they were drinking the urine of the reindeer that ate it. So, and and it's like it's a it's a trippy mushroom, I guess. I've never done it. I'd be too chicken. <laughs> yeah, I'm way past eating psychedelics myself. I really am. No matter how good they say they were. <laughs> God, Jesus. Lord Jesus, I have spent the last 10 months in two different worlds. I don't need anything. No, you don't need help. Yeah, I just landed yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Out magic flying reindeer nuggets. That's what he had in his pocket. He had flying reindeer nuggets. Oh, it was funny. The creepy <laughs> trees. The creepy trees. They climb off. It's just so good in so many ways. Shelby, what movie was that? Santa Claus is coming to town and it's a really old old like when I was little 
uh, they're clay animated Dick Van Dyke, really old. Yeah, we should watch that again. Yeah, they've remastered it, but yeah, it's cute because um, Chris Kringle was abandoned. Well, Claws, the baby was abandoned, and then he later became, and he was adopted by the elves. Yeah. I like some of the stories about the St. Nick, St. Nicholas. Uh, usually, uh, I don't know if you remember some of the old uh, pictures of St. Nicholas who's wearing green, not red. Green. green. So he would be considered a green man, basically. And he was, um, he would, they would make things for um, the, the children in the community. So, I mean, there's so many little stories. There's actually quite a few stories out there from different cultures that all have so so similar um sort of related information and which all sort of gives you a piece of the pie as to why we are celebrating the way we are like the, the santa claus we see now is 100 percent coca-cola yeah. yeah right yeah. so commercialized it's unreal you know, and I, and I really have a hard to... That's one of the reasons we're doing so much shadow work. We're not supposed to be running around buying presents, going broke. We're supposed to be going within, hibernating, and yes, sharing big meals from the harvest, but with our group. So the whole thing that this has been turned into is just intensifies those dark feelings that we're going to dissolve over the next couple of days. Bye. I, uh, I'm from Ontario, uh, but my blood line is Italian, Native, and Scottish. How about you, Shelby? I am from New Hampshire in the United States, and I'm second generation Portuguese here. My parents, my dad's parents from Madeira Island, Portugal, down off the coast of the Gulf. Madeira Islands are off the coast of Morocco. Mm -hmm. His mom and his parents met on the boat, and they arrived here in 1810. And you're from Calgary. Well, welcome here. Welcome. And eh, Shelby, 1810, that's when your family came here? Wow. Yeah. Um, we're a little bit newer than that. My Italian family came in, um, I think, uh, early 40s. Early 40s. Where's Cork? Where's Cork Teardrop? And Pakistan, yeah. Is Cork in the British Isles or Ireland in that area? I'm from Cork. I don't know. Uh, well, that one's new for me. It is Ireland. Ireland. Right. Deirdre, nice to meet you, dear. Tennessee, that wonderful. Okay, so... We were just talking about Tennessee the other day, weren't you and I talking yeah. about that? They uncovered the pyramid. Thank you. I Thank you very much. That's sweet. Thank you. Um, we're, we're old witches. You get the facts in this channel. <laughs> <laughs> Happy solstice to you. Thank you. Uh, so I right. think uh, I think it would be a good idea if we uh, uh, wrapped up some of our discussion or or. If there's any other stories you want to talk a little bit about before we move on to the wishes. Nope. You guys, so you've been thinking about your wishes all this time. Stop posting them in there. Yep. Um, yep. So this is a time that you want to start thinking about what your wishes are. And um, please type one wish that you would like to see happen for you in the coming year. And I'm going to breathe it into the burning herbs that I have here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And into the flame while we're doing this okay so um also shelby would you read them off to me as they come so i can do that yes, i will all right come on you guys don't be shy you've been listening this whole time abundance prosperity happiness peace maybe you need a home maybe you need a job think big maybe you want to start a new business maybe you want to return to dancing something you did as a child come on i want to have energy yes I hope you're listening. Our energy, feeling better for the energy. I wish that a really exciting opera, art opportunity would come to me this year. Yes, you're going to manifest that art year. 
your art is going to appear in front of the right people at the right moment and the right time. You're going to put it there. You're going to follow your inspired action. And it is so. Hard choice. Oh, come on. I wish for COVID to be gone. I wish for myself not to be shy. Does this one so with out with shy and in with confidence and self-esteem in personal power you to start uh, seeing yourself as the valuable soul that you are and stop comparing yourself to others that's why we're shy we're always scared that we're going to be either rejected or not approved of rejection is what we're really scared of I think in not speaking forward I need my big garage gone and maybe and maybe come ahead. I'm not sure what that means, but big garage gone. <laughs> <laughs> Health, wealth, happiness, and confidence, as Christy says. Yes. Yes, and those are. To be more in sync with Mother Nature or the One. Your awareness is the tell here that you're on that path already. Isn't that true? Mm hmm I you wish for a better, better job. job with more money. This is one. So, you, Keep know, it. you know your purpose for the better job. You know how you bring, you solve problems for the better job. You have confidence in your ability to be of service to others. And with those, that combination, the exact job has been created just for you. And you'll be compensated for those things. For continued success we have here. Please, for my health, my name, and Mia, Mia is looking for, um, how are we doing this? We're going to release it, or they're making a wish. Some okay. people are joining in here at this point, you know. So her wish is for, um, for health. Her name is Mia. Myla. Sorry, you guys. Little eyes. I wish to connect with and live happily with soul family and spirit guides nice. well I've already started that yeah and so that can only expand from here because when someone doesn't feel like that you won't go with it you know the feeling now you, i wish that the people with cancer mm. that they don't have it anymore and live a long life and let's go back to what you said before tamara the covid bye by and all variants of it listen our bodies are the biggest pharmaceutical creators on the planet nothing can replicate what we can create if we put our minds to it and we alchemize and purify as best as we can and from what i understand from what i'm hearing we can alchemize all of the toxins that are being thrown at us and all of the things like that and purify that and turn it into the energy that we desire. That's real magic right there. You know, I had a video a long time ago where I rubbed my hands together and I zapped the teacher. And people say magic doesn't exist, but you could agree that I raised energy. I felt that energy and I released it at the time. We can do it with all energy. Yeah. It's just we'll have to work with them and practice. I and wish I would worry more. about every day to build, pay, or feed my family. I wish I wouldn't have to worry about every bit. Okay. This is two things. This is about I worrying wish. Oh. and bills and, and abundance. Yeah. Success in all we do. Another one. I wish COVID and cancer to be gone for all too. We all deserve to live healthy and joyous lives. And without worry. Let's, without let's worry. Let's alchemize the worry. We're all here. We're all together. We can feel the energy in the room. We don't know what the future holds, even if we think we have a plan. Believe me, I had all kinds of plans this year. And and it really, I should have been able to achieve those plans, supposedly. But when we force things through, we get other things. So and, and I think when we force things through, we're doing that from a place of worry. And the, so stepping more into our own personal power, stepping more into our own faith would be my wish for you yeah 
you know, stepping more into that place that this is going to be okay. I'm not going to force this thing because I've done this before. You know, when I force it, it's, when I make things happen. Believe me. Right. It so, doesn't all of you. While we're thinking of, while I'm thinking of this, it would be a good idea to mention your gods, your deities them specifically to align with where we're at today in helping us uh, get our wishes so i want to i want to call in uh, the moon goddess okay diana that's one goddess i've always loved to work with and i want to call in the grandfathers and the grandmothers that i've been working with my my whole career and um, ask them to be present here today um, there are many other gods, and one of them I'll, I'll mention now and then give, you, give it to you, Odin. Odin is also considered the possibility uh, of being Santa. So let's invite Odin here. And who else? Uh, he is Santa. Not, for me, it's, I, angel, I, they don't all necessarily have names. So I have angels, sages, and spirit guides. But often, very often, again, recently, I've had Hecate coming into my presence, um, talking to me about a lot of different things. I just did a, I just did a kind of a final trip to my favorite cemetery. I'm hearing a lot from her, in her um, chrome form, because yep. that's me now. Yeah, yeah, yep. totally. She's very protective. Two dogs just spend the way. Two hounds. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome. Continue right. growth. Your witches here. Continue growth to know my highest self, peace, abundance, and harmony. To blow that in the garage charge my plans and happiness whatever it is you wish for that garage we blow into that smoke that's <laughs> not exactly that's sure but it's important and in your plans and it to go smoothly and and to bring you the happiness hi Gemma. you're never late sweetheart what you can do right now is we're asking you to consider uh, a wish that you would like to put out there and um, maybe have come true by the end of next uh, by the by the end of next year. Lay down right there. So give us a wish, Gemma. What wish would you like us to blow into this? Yeah. You're Herbal. welcome. I, you know, my wish is to release the things I've been attached to. That. Just unnecessary attachments. You yeah. Know that I really can step into that place of knowing, like, yeah. you just be twirling around an attachment here. Step that's, into your face, Shelby. That's you for know. you. That's just for you, Shelby. That's for you. I thank you. He wish you Mary Yule. Thank you so much. Happy Winter Solstice. Welcome, Diana. Welcome, Odin. Mm -hmm. Thank you, babe. Thank you for being here. We got everybody's wishes here. Can you think of any other ones? Gemma, um, come up with a wish yet? I can send some out for some others. I wish for my kids' path to be clear on their, their moving forward to try to purchase a home. That's always a ride, especially where I'm living right now, where we have been in this area. And let's see. Um, I my peace and my sobriety. Good one, Gemma. Honestly, it's amazing I'm still sober. Right. I, I, I've been giving myself a lot of credit for that. That's one. Good. I used to think I was such a party girl, but the truth of the matter is that I, I just did it so I wouldn't feel any of that stuff. So don't do that, you guys. If you're younger than me, don't do that. You yeah. know, really, because you know what? You end up being a sniveling mess when you're 56 and you still have to deal with it anyway. It, you will. Or you're keep doing this. So not only does she to find peace with her sobriety, but she would like the strength to keep it up. Now, that's a good one. And with the stag and the wolf story, do you want to share the stag and the wolf story? I can't remember it right now. When I all I kept thinking about when you're talking about stag is was the in Wicca it was the cohort to the goddess. He's a stag body, with the big male formation and the big rack. But what story do you mean? Just help my memory for a minute, because I'm sure I know, but I'm a little fried. <laughs> That's all right. You brought it up yesterday, and I'm not so familiar with it unless it's got to do with the winter story. Uh, about have, yeah, the wolf is the female, I believe. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. 
That's okay. Well, get it together for a second, and I'm going to share the story about the Irish one. The Irish is about the wren and the robin. And what is really interesting is today I saw a robin. I was really surprised with all the winter out there. And I saw a robin. And didn't I find some wren feathers that my cats left me, that they killed a wren? Which is the story. The robin's supposed to kill the wren at this on this day. And don't I see a wren? I mean, don't I see the robin and then find the wren feathers in the same day? I thought that was very interesting. I'd forgotten about this to this moment, but yesterday before the appointment, we were standing at the uh, camper looking out the window. I'm like, look at these fat robins. I mean, you guys, it's cold and the snow is set in here. And just over our fence, one was sitting there and the others, I thought there must have been some good bugs, but I'd forgotten about that to this moment. It's like, it was really unusual that there was about a half a dozen of them. Right. There yesterday before we were leaving. Usually I make more of a note of this, but this whole past 24 hours has been a dream, dream state. So we'll just go with it. So I'm just going back to a couple of things here. I wish I asked for a smooth passing from my grandmother. Wow, chills. Um, We also have someone here who is uh, a wish for their father's health, dad's health. And my wish... My financial situation to come to a place of abundance and stability and a home. A smooth transition for your grandmother. Yes. And your father's good health. An apartment and is in an awful need. Wait, apartment I'm in is awful. I need a house with a yard for familiars. A house for, oh, you know that one. Uh, this is for a house for my mm-hmm. friends who have familiars. And safe, perfect home, exactly the way that the, the exact price that you want to pay for it. Yep. I like coming. the way there. I was going to the housing thing today. They're coming down. As above, so below. Amazing to be oh my god i heard the robin outside earlier so loud yeah they were really loud yeah i don't want to keep talking about my experience yesterday but i had a very traumatic you know whatever and that i forgot about them they were unbelievably loud and it was huge of course everything's going to look bigger where the woods are empty and you have snow but it's really weird in new hampshire to see a robin sitting in a tree like in a bush right there I- very unusual right now and we wish for more than one wish. You can. You can. And what you Where? missed, what I would like to Gemma, just I want to recap something for Gemma, especially. She's one of my um, dear followers. And, and she got here late. So just as a recap for Gemma, especially, and for anyone who's new um, right now, um, this next 12 days are the 12 days of Christmas. And it's, it's an old... Um, it's an old Norse way of thinking, and each day you want to take um, you want to each day you want to take as a special day. And I'm going to say t- get something like a gratitude jar, and each day you write something that you would like to see happen in the following year. And oh, look at all the smoke that's come up! Isn't that weird? What happened? It's working. It is working. It's amazing. The smoke is everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so the first day. Oh, you know, when I just got the wheat, you all felt that too. I could feel the room. Oh, amazing. Well, that's one of the most blessed things I've had happen. This. Oh, my world. goodness. Look at the smoke. It's just, wow, it's amazing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes, it is a sign. Love you guys. So go forward knowing that it is done. Don't self-sabotage. Each day, each day of the, of the, in the gratitude jar, you want to put write something that you would like to see happen. Each day, write something new. Okay? And then next year, open it up. It's like a time capsule. And see how well you did. We have one that came in. A wish for strength. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah I got goosebumps to do with that one. And and the way look at the way it's forming. I you can use you can't see it from our way, but it's like made a thing on the camera. I back know. Up, back I, up just a little it. bit. I wonder back if you, up just a little bit. I'm I, trying to see the shape. 
Can you see any shape? Let's any... all read the image here. What do you guys see in that picture? It looks like a reindeer. Oh, it looks like a deer. <laughs> like a deer. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it doesn't. It. It's changing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, everyone's wishes are coming true. That's wonderful. Yeah, you guys, you got it. Now we got an angel looking okay. thing with arms and look at that. Now we have fear here again, and the power is going through the hands above it. Isn't that something? And that's yeah. like the sun. The sun is just coming. Look at the big light. <laughs> and I now it's it. an wow. infinite. Yes, isn't that wonderful? What a nice way to end our, our day with a angels, sages, and spirit guides, guys. So the stag then strengthens stamina, everyone. Just so you know, that's what the stag is about. Strength and stamina. And may I wish it for all of you and that you stay healthy this whole season. And uh, the deer represents love and unconditional love. And I hope you find that as well. And if, even if it isn't romantic love, I hope you find it in your dear friends and your family members and in yourself and that you love yourself. And the wolf is protection and your family and your pack. And healing and the and teacher you. and that you find the path you're meant to be on. The guide. Yes. It's Wonderful. Fun. All here. Thank you so much for joining us all. And let's just uh, put our heads in prayer and quiet this for a moment and speak to your gods and goddesses and, and wish everyone in the room uh, a, a wonderful season. Just sit with yourself for quiet for a moment, please. Yeah. Blessed yeah. you and happy Christmas to everyone. Brightest blessing to you. I love you so much. Sir. Love you too. Bye bye, everyone. Mwah. See you all soon. Mwah. Take care. Take care. Blessings, everyone. Happy Christmas. That was wonderful to have you all with us. Thank you. We'll see you again, eh? Take good care, everyone. May the magic of Christmas be with you forever and every day of this year.